Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. Sorry for being a few minutes late as we got all our technical things worked out and, and joined up. So happy start of production to everybody. Today we're going to take you a look inside what does start of production mean. So as we walk through, it's going to be a quick and sweet one. And as we walk through, what we're going to be talking about is what does start of production really mean for XRO and what is this major milestone? Again, just a reminder for shareholders that are new to our live stream, this is live, this isn't pre-edited. It is totally live. I'm gonna make a very live comment right now and say, I don't have a screen. So somebody's gonna to have to flip my slides for me. <laughs> and so as we, as we jump on in, really a great reminder to us is that XRO is reshaping the way that the world consumes energy. By that we mean that our technology forms the foundation of the next platform of control for motors and batteries. As we go into start of production, we wanted to kind of share with you what does that mean. It, for the last several years, we've been working hard to take our IP, our designs, to market, to get third-party validations, to get real-world validations, to prove flexibility and scalability. But taking IP to manufacturing is hard. <laughs> it's really hard. And there's so many companies that struggle with this stage and there's so many companies that have done a great job of it, but it takes a lot of time. I can tell you that this milestone of start of production, the ability to roll just a few drives off of our plant behind us is years and years of work by multiple teams across XRO. So right now what we're, what we're showing you on the screen is actually a blowout of the coil driver. So there's about 10 key parts that you see there we do design each stage and we, and we do assemble externally at a contract manufacturer right now, but that green section, those boards, that's where our core tech sits and that's what we build here at XRO. So what does that mean? Okay, we build parts. Why can't anybody do that? There's lots of companies in the world that build a drive. Not everybody builds an XRO coil driver, but everybody can build a three-phase drive. There is over one thousand components that make up our drives. So an inverter with 1,000 components, many of those are critical components, meaning that they're a chip that's sole sourced or they come from an area that we know is long. Some of these components had a 50 plus week delivery when we started on our path to production over 24 months ago. And so it's been a lot of team members working hard into the night making sure that we have relationships with every single one of our supply chain partners, making sure that the supply chain partners knew the extra story, believed in the tech, wanted to invest in us, getting access just to the chips for the production was a lot of work. And by that I mean the chip manufacturers aren't just out there handing out orders just because you're a startup that says you have that forecast. You have to be negotiating those contracts, which we've done for the next few years. So as you look at the screen, we're sharing to you what we call critical components. Our supply chain team has done a phenomenal job of ensuring that we have all the components to be able to launch our production and run through the next 12 months and ahead. This means that all of our critical components are in the green. We started the year with more than 30 components that were critical items in the red. And so we made sure that we were all set up and ready to go. We have two contract manufacturers. The first one is on our coil driver. It's here in Alberta, a great partner in August that's able to assemble our drives, saving us our capital for the rest of our production facility. But we build all the electronics here for our coil driver, our motor control, or our cell driver, our battery control. So as you think about what that means, Rebuild, as everybody knows, is out in the US building up our cell driver energy storage units. August builds our coil driver units. So where are we building them from? Where do the electronics come from? I'm sitting in our beautiful manufacturing facility here in Calgary, Alberta, where we've created over 100 jobs in all disciplines of engineering and marketing and finance and all of our corporate functions. And we're here today in our net target building, launching the start of our production. This means that our line will be running. We'll start it up at about 9 a.m. today, so we're reaching out to you, our shareholders, to thank you for your support, but also to give you kind of a head start on what we're doing, because we couldn't have all of you here live. I hope next year, one day in the future, 
we're able to host a full day event and we can have many more shareholders that have supported us for the past few years and new shareholders that are coming in today to be able to support us. So we're showing you right now a look inside our building. There's lots of videos on our website at xro.com that lets you walk through with Simon, our Chief Operations Officer, and lets you see inside the facility. So I won't focus on that today. The other stage of getting to this day today is about quality. And I can't say it enough. Quality, quality, quality. Investing in an in-house quality team. Utilizing contractors to help us be audited for our ISO 9001. ISO 9001 isn't just a piece of paper, it's a DNA to your business. And it's something that we've invested a lot of time in. All of our team is full 8D trained. That's a Ford training for quality and, and root cause. You can, you can Google it and find out, but 8D training. There is so much training that goes on as part of the onboarding of our employees to ensure that when our product goes out to market, we're gonna set a standard for PPM. We're gonna set a standard for quality and reliability. This comes because we spent the time to recruit people from all over the world, from Simon and Eric, who you've met, to others on our team, Rozzy, Mark, Ben, many of our engineers that have years of experience in how to build automotive inverters. So when we think about that stage quality, the big one that customers ask us up for is called IATF. When you're getting IATF certified, it means that you have to have been in production for over a year. Otherwise, you can't qualify for that standard. So now we're launching our ticker for that. And so these are all things that are building our long-term future. Our solution is not just a hardware solution or not just a software solution. This is a partnership. This is a complete inverter, meaning that the hardware and the software work together. It's all designed here in-house. While we're building our electronics here, it doesn't mean that we can't license our product. We never walked away from the ability to license the technology to large volume manufacturers. That is our future. That is where we see ourselves going in the years to come. But to be able to license the product, when you truly have something that is not in the market today, is not the three-phase inverters in the market today, you have to be able to demonstrate that you can do software and hardware, that the supply chain exists, that the quality standards can be met. You have to be able to demonstrate all of this to take that licensing market. And that's what we're doing here. Our software teams are working endlessly to not only develop our product, to take our product through to design to manufacturing, to work through tweaks that we need to make as we get out in the real world. This is all happening behind the scenes as we launch our start of production. Again, when you drop something in, so we, we put it into our HB4 partnership, which we announced several weeks ago, that doesn't mean that they just turn it on today and it's plug and play. We'll get there, we will, just like we said we'd get to today, but we're not there yet. So that means that our teams need to work with the manufacturer so the software can talk to each other. We can target anything on land with wheels on our motor control, which is called our coil driver, our motor inverter. We can target any kind of stationary energy storage in the commercial and industrial unit through our battery control, our cell driver. The core of both of those is inverters. Inverters technically just convert power. Power electronics converts power, but it's also the performance of that end vehicle, that end equipment in the case of the grid tied storage. So that's what we're doing here. We're creating all of those electronics. The markets that we go after today are where we've done a lot of disciplined innovation on how we look and see and say, yes, this is going to be a good commercially viable product for us. So we can realize our tech in a variety of forms. And we can realize multiple forms of revenue as we build our future. For now, we're targeting, as everybody knows, light duty, three wheel, light four. We're targeting with commercial trucks. We're targeting commercial industrial energy storage. And we've started with our first innovation contract for automotive. These are all little pieces that build that future that we all want. As we propel forward, 
we have our projects. Right now on the screen, you're seeing our new wrapped C electric truck. We're still ongoing our integration with C and working well through our partnership. You see the vicinity bus, which we will launch our first production with. It's going to be launched at the October trade show in Florida called APTA. And we continue to work through getting our software to talk to each other and demonstrate unforeseen performance in the market in a cost-effective package. For mass adoption to happen, for us to come, you know, get over what we're grappling with to change to electrification, we need to change the status quo. We need to adopt technology. We need to be patient as it takes time. You know, here behind the scenes at Extra, when we're sitting, when Daryl and Eric and I are talking, we talk a lot about innovation in technology. And so I'm going to use one that we've talked about with some of our investors recently. And the changeover from a flip phone to an iPhone. It's not like one morning somebody woke up and said, here's the iPhone, let's use it, and everybody adopted immediately. So we're fundamentally changing how the world is consuming energy. Not just here at Exro. Our controls, our inverters are doing that from a control level. But there's awesome motor technology coming out and, and new motor technology coming out. It's awesome chemistries in, in battery that are, that are changing and allowing us to have bigger range. How we make those systems efficient is what we really need to focus on now. We've got vehicles that allow us to have pretty good range now. And we've got governments that are pulling along the infrastructure. It's not perfect. We've got a long way to go. Battery energy storage will play a big piece in that. But what we really need to do is make those systems more efficient, make those vehicles go farther on a single charge. And that's where XRO comes in. So we thank our partners who had the foresight to, to think and to adopt new innovation from CN Vicinity to HB4 to Linamar to our partners under NDA to Wolong. We thank you very much for your support in the company. XRO is developing a new platform of motor control. Today is a day to celebrate. Thank you so much for all of your support. It comes with so much behind the scenes to get us here. And as I've told our team, as I addressed our team over the week, and I'll address them again today, remember, start of production marks one drive rolling off to make us one dollar that will lead to one million, that will lead to 10 million, that will lead to one billion. For those that are in our facility today, you'll be able to see on our wall where we have that for our five-year plan, where we believe in the future ahead of us. In battery control, we are moving past the current status quo. We're thinking about second life and what we do and how we solve a future supply chain problem. We're thinking about cell level control and a whole new way to condense power electronics into energy storage. We have our energy storage on display here as well, and there'll be lots of media covering our event today and our own internal marketing team that we'll share on our, on our channels later. So a new level of control for batteries and motors. Our manufacturing milestone is one that's come with a lot of support from all of our shareholders, with a lot of support from all of our team, and with a lot of support from all of our families that sit behind the scenes and allow us to do what we are doing every day. Working at an emerging growth company means that we're here a lot. And even when we're not here, we think about being here. And that's a fantastic thing. It's because we all know that we're doing something that matters, that we are building something that matters. We know the path has been a bit bumpy. We know that delays are frustrating. And we recognize that bringing shareholder value is defined differently for different ones of you. So for those of you that understand our journey, we appreciate you coming along with us. We're gonna to continue to dedicate every minute that we have to bringing our technology to market and to changing the way the world consumes energy. Thank you very much. I'm gonna wish everybody a great day and I'm gonna get back to set up for the rest of our day. Thank you everybody.